All right. Well, so thanks everybody for being here today. This is a this is what we're calling a Bridging the Gap Conference Preview Series. Uh, we did this last year before our conference. Today's session is preparing for tax season, a solid plan. Uh, with me today, and I'll introduce in a minute, is Don Brolin. Don and I did a somewhat similar version of this uh, in May after tax season, where we did a kind of a download of, okay, what did happen during tax season that we need to change? What went well? Uh, what are things we are going to do in the next, whatever, eight months to get ready for this next tax season? And many of you on that one told us that you were going to make changes going into this tax season. So hopefully you did, but this is going to be a little bit of a reminder of, of what those were and what we wanted to do uh, before this tax season, which we are uh, upon us right now. Uh, like I said, this is a preview of Bridging the Gap Conference. Uh, Dawn, will, and I'll introduce her in a second, but Dawn will be a speaker at our conference. I'm going to leave this slide up for a second. Um, that QR code will take you to our conference link, and then at the bottom on the left side, you see the website for the conference. So you can take a screenshot of that or you can scan the QR code. But the themes of this year's conference are, you know, it's always bridging the gap, but collaborate, automate, delegate. And Dawn and I will be discussing those things as well as others today. Housekeeping before we jump into it. This is available for CPE. You need to be stayed. You need to be. You need to stay logged in for 50 minutes at least. Um, you need to answer three of the four polling questions, which will pop up randomly throughout the presentation. Your certificates will be sent via email within the week. Uh, make sure you check your spam or junk folders. Uh, sometimes they get stuck in there, so make sure you check that. The slides will be emailed to you, but they are also are available under the resources tab here in Cvent. Uh, this is our, I think, our second uh, webinar on Cvent, and we are getting the kinks up, but I think we've got it going pretty well today. And this will go up as a recording on YouTube, our Trimare YouTube channel later today. And Don and I are more than willing to answer questions. So if you see on the right-hand side, there's a Q&A tab, answer or ask any questions you have in that tab, and we will get to those answers during the presentation is the goal that I have. All right, Don, let's bring Don on stage. Well, Don's always on stage. Don's life is on <laughs> stage. Um, so Don Brolin is with me today. Many of you, or most of you, I'd be surprised if any of you don't know Don Brolin. But Don, let me uh, pass it to you, and you can introduce yourself. Sure. Yeah. Always excited to do anything with Randy Crabtree, the man who is changing the lives of practitioners across the world by helping them understand that it's okay to not always be in your office. Most cer certainly Im important to me as well. Um, yeah, so I'm Dawn Brolin, uh, the designated motivator. I'm here to just encourage people. Uh, you know, Andy and I will talk about some of the things I know, some of the things that I've changed for this tax season, and I've made changes all the time because I want to make my life better. We'll talk about that. Uh, I am the CEO of Powerful Accounting, Inc. out of Wyndham, Connecticut. We handle tax returns. We do some bookkeeping. I've got one bookkeeper on staff. Um, most of it we outsource. Um, you know, been in business since 1999, so that makes me 53 years old, just in case you were wondering. And uh, just really excited about the Accounting Cornerstone Foundation that Randy and I have have started with a, a good handful of other amazing folks to help people to in-person learning and really excited about that. And so that's just me. I'm always here to help. Oh, ask questions. I want to help people. That's That's the whole deal, Randy. Yep, that is. Well, that's not the whole deal. There's a lot more <laughs> besides that. She didn't even get to the top 100 most influential people in accounting list from accounting today multiple times. Um, I got to join her on her list this year, which yes, I'm very congratulations, about. Andy. Well, thank you. I'm and I, and then, <laughs> we're, we're we're trying to make a difference. Ooh, yes, and that's why that's why I think you and I get along so well. You're yeah. out motivating, educating helping people figure out ways that they can be more efficient and have that work-life balance that seems to be too elusive sometimes to people. So, so, and right. we're going to talk about your work-life balance today too, because you have sure. a really cool story around that. 
Uh, there's me. Uh, Don mentioned a lot of the things that, that we've done together. We're both on the Intuit Tax Council, the Accounting Cornerstone Foundation. I have a slide at the end of this deck that will give you more information about that. But it's an organization that does send individuals to conferences, which both Don and I will vouch that conferences have changed our lives. Uh, mm -hmm. Accounting conferences have been awesome. Um, and then one last thing, I, I just got asked to be on the editorial board of CPA Magazine last week. So I'm kind of excited about that as well. Congratulations. So, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I didn't know I was even up for it. And they called and said, yeah, you're on the board. So all right, I'm on the board. Right, um, there it is. Uh, Trimerit uh, is the, the company I started. Uh, Trimerit deals with specialty tax. This will come into play when we're just talking about collaboration and, and delegation because, you know, Dom will vouch for it. You don't have to be an expert in everything. You can outsource things. And, and Trimerit's there to be an outsource partner for you in, in tax credits and incentives. And so what's our learning objectives? It's basically all tax season stuff. What can we do better? What can we, how can we be more efficient? What is tax compliance in general? The efficiency part, planning. Dawn has gotten big into strategic planning with clients. Uh, for me, that's, I think, a huge thing because if you know the answers before tax season, it really uh, uh, makes tax season a lot smoother and, and can spread out the uh, seasonality of tax season, which I think is uh, extremely important. So there's some learning objectives. This is going to be us having a discussion. We'll see where it goes. So, Sean, if you want to put the first polling question up, our polling questions are very easy. I think the polls are, are you still here? Yes or yes? Uh, and so just... <laughs> Just make sure you go and answer those polls so you get your CP. I want to make them easy because I know Don and I are going to, oh, it is yes or no. So you can say you're not here, but we still count that as you are here. Um, and uh, um, I think a lot of responses are coming in. All right, Don, before you and I start the discussion, I think going into this tax season, one of the most important things is just to be aware of what's going on in Congress. Because right now, Congress is my very well going to throw us a monkey wrench at the start of tax season here. So I'm going to spend a couple minutes going through uh, this new bill that it's currently in front of Congress that we expect to pass. We don't know. We can't guarantee it, but we expect to pass. And if it's going to pass, it's going to delay potentially some of your tax filings. So so let me give you a few minutes on this. I think this is almost my, my public service announcement of... Uh, <laughs> of what we need to be aware of that currently could affect the start of tax season for us. So, so this new bill is called the Tax Relief for American Families and Workers Act of 2024. It has significant changes or benefits in reality to, to business taxpayers that I'll go through uh, and, and individuals from a standpoint that it's uh, looking to increase the child tax credit. So from a 1040 standpoint, I'm not going to get into that too much, knowing that the child tax credit is the major portion on the 1040 side that you need to be aware of. And um, on the business side, there's, there is about five things I will highlight. What you need to know, though, is Congress just, I think, came back. They took a recess last week. They're in session as of yesterday right now. This is how I understand it. What we are hearing from kind of sort of inside information is Congress expects this bill to be signed into law the third week of February. And we're all going to have our face drop. Third week of February, what are you talking about? Tax season's now. They're going to make changes that's going to affect my tax returns in the third week of February? Well, we're kind of used to it, I, I think. It's not the first time this has happened. But I think what's going to happen is you are going to need to look at extensions on, on business taxpayers uh, specifically because these changes can be significantly affect bottom line of their tax return. One of the biggest things, and here's, here's what we need to be aware of that's coming out of this bill. You know, the, uh, the Tax Relief for American Families and Workers Act of 2024. I'm guessing you've heard about it, but being that you're in tax season already, maybe it hasn't even hit your radar. One of the biggest things, and we've all been waiting for this for seven years, basically, is in there is the 174 fix. The, the 174 are R&D expenses. Since 2022, we've happened to capitalize R&D expenses and amortize them over five years for US-based expenses and amortize them over 15 years for foreign-based expenses. That we've never had to do in our lifetime until 2022. And we shouldn't have to do this. This bill would retroactively 
change that to immediate expensing for R&D expenses again, all the way back to the beginning of 22. We don't know how the mechanics will work of doing it in 22, if we're gonna to have to amend, if somehow we're gonna be able to carry those expenses forward to the current year. We don't know that yet. And obviously this hasn't passed. This is a little bit of a kicking it down the road again, because under these rules, starting in 2026, we will have to capitalize again. Now, I think that is Congress giving themselves time to make a permanent fix. Um, there's a lot more agreement when they do these short-term fixes right now, and so that's what we're under, but it's very good news if this passes for taxpayers. Um, the other thing that has happened in this is the fix for, was it, 163J, the limitation on business interest deduction. The rules changed at the beginning of 23. You were going to not be able to deduct as much business interest because they were not going to allow depreciation, amortization, these different things to come up with your calculation for limitation on business interest deduction. That is proposed to go back to the old rules retroactively at the beginning of 23 under this tax bill. A big one. Uh, bonus depreciation, we've, we've, we've lived under 100% bonus depreciation until 2023. We went down to 80% in 23. We're scheduled to be in 60% in 24. This bill would bring back 100% bonus depreciation through, I think it's 25. So yeah, we would have it for 23, 24, 25, which we weren't currently going to have. So that's another reason, you know, it's a huge tax savings opportunity for some of your clients. So that's something to be aware of. Um, some increases on the limitations for 179 as well are going to happen in this. And then this is a big one, but maybe not a big one. This bill is being paid for solely by eliminating the employee retention credit, which I'm guessing a lot of you are happy about because it has been so much fraud involved, but it would eliminate it tomorrow. Tomorrow would be the last day you could file any ERC claims. Now, this is probably not gonna pass by tomorrow. And so is it gonna be retroactively go back and say anything submitted after January 31st is, is not going to be allowed? Very well could happen. That's what they did when they eliminated the fourth quarter of 21's ERC credit, very well, this could be retroactive to say, sorry, if it's not in by January 31st, even though this bill didn't pass till February 15th, you have to abide by these rules. And then I'm going, I'm going, I think this is important in tax season. One other thing that you really, 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 I'm gonna say about a hundred reallys need to know going into this tax season um, is IRS has an unbelievably strong amnesty program for inaccurate ERC filings. They just announced this at the end of December. If you have any clients and you're, and what, why this is important in tax season, sorry, Don, I'm not letting you speak at all, but we're almost there. I'm learning, I'm yeah. in. All right, um, this is going to be extremely important. You are going to be surprised, and we all know it, and you've already been surprised by clients that claim DRC, and half of them, you already, or more than half, you already told them they don't qualify. But someone else came in and said they do qualify, and they, they followed the money. IRS put an amnesty program in that says you have until March 22nd of 2024, so we have you know less than two months to do this, to basically, it's called the voluntarily voluntary disclosure of the, oh, I forget the acronym right now, but you voluntarily say, yes, we got this incorrectly. We looked at it after the fact and realized that this is not an accurate ERC claim. We're going to return this money. You return it, no questions asked. You actually get to keep 20% of that ERC, even though you didn't qualify, you get to keep 20% of those dollars and 100% of those expenses that you usually would have to reduce and not claim on the tax return because of the ERC, you get to deduct 100% of that. So even the 20% you got to keep, you get to deduct those expenses still. So it's a, it's a significant benefit, very short term. The penalties, if you don't qualify and you don't follow this program are significant. And so as the advisor, this is just going to be, unfortunately, another thing you need to do this tax season is identify those opportunities where you need to bring this to your clients because this amnesty program is so, so great. Keeping 20%, 20% of 
no chance they can audit it, no penalties and interest. If you received interest with your ERC claim, you keep that as well. So believe me, this is something you need to look at further. All right, that's something I just, uh, you have to uh, know going into this tax season. What I love right. about that, Randy, is that I have no worries because all of my clients went to TriMerit. <laughs> well, so. thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, we do have a uh, an ERC verification program that we do as well, um, which you know we can probably help people if they don't know if the claim was legitimate or not. Um, but uh, but that's running out of time quick. We're not gonna our resources are gonna be tough to to do a lot of those in the next uh, seven eight weeks. But thank you for that, Don. Yeah. All right, let's talk. I highlighted those first three things because that's the theme of the conference, collaboration, delegation, automation. When I, when I say collaboration, I think Dawn already just mentioned it there. She's collaborated with us on things so like ERC and R&D. Um, but when we're talking collaboration in, in during tech season, I think this is a extremely important. How do you look at collaboration, Dawn, from, from tech season or all year long? What is the keys for you? I have two really great examples that just happened in the last couple of weeks. So I have a client who, who sold their rental property in 23, a wonderful client actually alerted me like before they closed on it. Like, so, wow, this guy communicated. With me. Nice. Whoa, big deal. So he, uh, so he brought in his paperwork and everything. And then we looked at his depreciation schedule and this is this guy I've had him for probably five years, but he was with, obviously another preparer when he first bought the rental property and then he lived in half the rental property. And the, when he moved out of the rental property, the prior account never put the other half of the house in service. So he, you know, you know, the rules, even if you didn't take it, you got to recapture it too bad. So sad. Call your dad. So what I did was I called Diana Crawford instead. <laughs> I called her. <laughs> And I said, Diana, I know there's a way that we can do this. I've never for, filled out a 3115. I didn't even know what that thing was. No clue. But when I took my tax, so funny, it was before I took my tax update. I called her and I said, have you ever done this? She goes, it's funny you call because I'm figuring that out for another client. I have, I'm almost at the end of my research to figure out exactly. and only have to file one form, not for every year. Thank goodness. Anyway, so I called her and I said, well, listen, can you fill, can you prepare the 3115 for me? I'll give you all uh, any information you need. You fill it out. I'll use that as my template to fill it out in my LACERT software because she's in pro series. Well, how much do you want for that? And, and I said, just tell me, because I already told the client, we're going to save you 13 grand by doing this one form. He goes, I'm willing to pay whatever I got to pay to save that 13. I said, exactly. So if it costs you five, which it's not gonna, but if it costs you five, you're still saving eight grand. He's like, yeah, I don't care. I'd rather give it to you than give it to the government. That's collaboration. I didn't know what to do at that point. I reached out to Diana. You know what? If you do this work, I want to pay you. Tell me how much and we'll pay you. And then the second one that came about is a client that I have in Texas. And we we're having issues with the Texas franchise tax. He he had ended up with two accounts. One because he was organized in Delaware. Why are people still doing that, Randy? Can we talk about that? <laughs> So he's organized, a del right? Now he's a foreign co or entity, but then he's really domestic because he's like, it's just, hello, come on. And I'm like, you know what? I need someone from Cal. I need someone from Texas to help me work through this because I'm not understanding why the, the franchise board's giving me one set of numbers of account number and web file number. And he's got a phone call and they gave him another set. What is going on? So I called my buddy Duke at Duke Tax. And I said, Duke, I got a problem. I need your help. And he's like, oh, tell me that whatever. And he's like, oh, no, no. he's in his system. He's looking things up. He's like, oh, I know what happened. I'm like, okay, uh, do it, fix it, bill me. That's collaboration. When you're at a point where you're like, I just don't know this. And I think that I've gotten really good at being comfortable, being not knowing number one, or, you know, asking the questions and we have a great text group, Randy and I, with a, with a few other of our buddies and we, you know, collaborate on that text group of, hey, has anyone ever done this? Has anyone seen that? Uh, because we can't possibly know everything. So being able to reach out, which by the way, is one of the reasons why we organized the Accounting Cornerstone Foundation because of the people we've met that we now collaborate with and, and offer out work. And I call Randy, Randy, I need a, I need to prepare in New Hampshire. I'm, I'm handing off a client. 
I want to hand them off. I would like, I'd rather do a nice, a nice referral, a soft referral to just, Hey, you know, I've got, I've got you somebody. That's what collaboration to me is all about is when you you're at a point where you don't know something or whatever, reaching out to someone that you, that you're comfortable with or whatever. And if you're not, if you haven't found anyone comfortable, get to a conference. There's a lot of comfortable, cool people out there who are willing to coll collaborate back. Yep, and I agree with all that. The other thing I look at with collaboration, and, and you you alluded to this as well. You, I mean, this is basically what you said is you can't know everything. The tax code is, you know, you, know, you can't even see it on my screen how, how large this tax code is. And so you can't be an expert. Often we as professionals think we have to do everything ourselves. And that's where we get in trouble during tax season because rather than finding the expert, going to Diana, going to whoever else and finding the answers, we spend time, we waste time trying to figure it out and research it ourselves. So there are so many opportunities for us to work with others, whether you're in a large firm, you know, you can do it internally potentially, whether you're in a smaller firm where you have relationships, a lot of times built at conferences, like Don said, where you can build these relationships and you just know, yeah, like, hey, I don't know anything about state and local tax. I know people that are experts at that. I'm going to build a relationship with those firms. And again, like Don says, we're going to build back and forth. They'll they'll do this for me. So so collaboration for me, I think, is a huge way to become more efficient during tax season because we don't have to be an expert at everything. And that ties in then to delegation because that's the same mindset that we have is that, I mean, even in the review and the tax return, rather than telling somebody, hey, here's the mistake, go fix it, we just fix it because you know, we just want that out the door. Um, and so delegation in general, I think is another key aspect to helping us be more efficient. And from a delegation standpoint, I know this is something you've you've got very good at, Don. Do you want to kind of elaborate on that at all? Yeah, I think in a lot, a lot of ways as we're working through our practices and as we're going through, understand that, yeah, I don't need to do everything. And I think I over-delegate. Like, I'd rather like, hey, Nicole, uh, you got this one. Call this guy. You do this. Oh, Tracy, you do that, whatever. And I'm really good at delegating because a couple of reasons, I think. One is there are things I am not really that good at. So, you know, in, in a situation where you're, you're, you know, like as far as like forward facing the clients, I, like, I mean, I think I'm good at that, but I, it's not something I should be doing. Uh, Tracy should be taking the calls from the clients and answering as much as she can. Obviously, she's not answering tax questions, but knowing that, you know what, I'm, I'm just delegating that to her and being comfortable with delegating and trusting that the person's going to follow through. But at the same time, you know, that, that's very dependent on your staff, um, you know, making sure you've got the right people in place that are able to, you know, you say, hey, I need you to do this and they don't forget to do it type of thing, which makes me crazy. And, you know, we've just, we've just got, I mean, we only have three people in our firm here. We've got some extended tax partners that are, you know, that's a whole nother thing. But, you know, we've got to know what we're good at, what we're bad at and delegate when we're not that good at it and, and rely on, and lean on others who have those strengths. And so like Tracy, man, we can't ever find anything. Nicole and I were like, where did this person upload? I, I looked in the normal folder and I don't see it. And she's, yep, it's right here. This is where the, like, she just, I don't know if she's got a, a detective mindset, but <laughs> we delegate to Tracy when we can't find something. And trust me, within two, three minutes, she's like, it's right here. Here's a, here's a link to SmartBall. Yep. Perfect. And right. Yep. And I, I go a step uh, a little bit further, even with delegation is from the standpoint that you can dele delegation is almost collaboration is from the standpoint that you can delegate, whether it's internally, externally, anything, there is nothing that somebody else can't do for you. In reality, at least the, the, the more, uh, the tasks that you don't enjoy doing, not even that you're not just good at, but you don't yeah. enjoy doing. I mean, if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to ha have passion for that. It's going to take longer. And so, I mean, it can be as simple as data entry. Um, yep. We can probably automate some of that as well, but as simple as data entry, uh, it could be, you know, uh, reaching out to the clients and, and, you know, getting the documentations that we don't have. For me, I go to the standpoint that I, I don't even look at my email. That's delegated. Somebody else does that for me and just highlights those. That You know how much time that saves me? And especially during tax season, if you don't have to, you know, search through all of this potential junk email to find the one email uh, that's important. Although there's a platform where you should probably be doing the B and doing communication on during tax season as well. Um, but but delegate, delegate anything that you're not good at, as Don said, or you're not passionate about, 
or you as the professional keep you on that high value, high, you know, price, although we'll talk about pricing as well, but that high uh, uh, value project that is going to uh, bring in the most revenue for you as well. So, so from a de delegation standpoint, it, it ties in with collaboration, but I think it's something we as a, the personalities that we have is that we want to do it ourselves because we have the answers. And so we have to get out of that mindset, especially during tax season, because the you know, in, back in my day, the 80 hour tax season uh, was just a given. And now we don't even have to do a 60 hour tax season. In fact, I know a lot of professionals that are below that. So we need to start realizing that we don't have to put this time in. And one of those key things, and I know this is a huge passion for you, is just the tech stack automation, all of that. So do you, maybe I think it, it makes sense for you to kind of go through the processes that you go through from a technology standpoint to bring efficiencies to tax season. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I won't go all, through all of them. We'll be here for two days, but uh, but one of the really big, big changes, we'll talk about that uh, today. And it, this is gonna maybe tie a little bit into setting boundaries or setting expectations, maybe even more, but, um, so we made a big change in our firm this year and we decided to automate the payment process, meaning, okay, people, we use ignition for our proposals, right? And our engagement letters. So I, and I love doing the videos. I, the videos are fun for me to, to set the expectations, right? So an automation tool, like if I'm, if I'm going in, I spent three hours, one day sending all of my, about $140,000 of just tax season, just, only tax return proposals. We're not going to talk about subscription pricing yet. But the so we're like, okay, what we decided to do was we wanted to automate that process. We found that by by doing manual invoicing, meaning I prepare a tax return, I get it done, I send the 8879, and then once they sign that, I process payment and then I send the return. I found that that sounded like a great process, but the problem was there were times I forgot to bill people. I was either, you know what, I got to get to the, I got a game, I got practice going on because Randy, it's softball season in which yep. we do taxes. Okay. It's not tax season anymore, people. It's softball, it's softball season, season in which Don, we do taxes. Sorry. We just launched the next poll. I just want people to know yeah, you keep going, but the, no, we, you keep going. The okay. polls up. I just want to make sure nobody misses that poll. The poll's currently up. Okay. Go ahead, Don. Sorry. Okay, cool. Yeah, no problem. So, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, what am I going to do different? Number one. I was tired of worrying about a cash flow, which we saw for last year with subscription pricing, but still, I don't want to worry about, did I bill someone? Did I forget? Because I look like an idiot nine months later and I'm like, hey, I'm an accountant, but I forgot to bill you because I'm just doing my year-end accounting or whatever, or, you know, reconciling from last month or I'm, we're looking in ignition to see who's still sitting there and haven't paid yet. And, you know, we're, we found like two, $3,000 that hadn't been billed out yet, right? So, we changed it from an automation perspective when we send, yeah, the, the second poll, there it is. Here it's up now, folks. Um, okay, so what we decided was is we're going to have all of our clients prepay this year. So, you know, you got to have guts. You got to have guts to say, you know what? I'm going to probably lose some people. And on January 12th, I did just that. I sent out my engagement letters and my proposals. I had a video explaining I don't want to deal with accounts receivable. I don't want to deal with worrying about whether I paid you or you paid me or not. That I don't want that to even be part of what my mind, my process is in my brain. And so we sent all of those out. And so far, I think we may have lost six or seven people so far. Um, some of the clients are because they didn't want to get in a subscription price. And some of those clients are because they, their return was easy. They're going to do it themselves moving forward or going somewhere else local or, well, someone got married, so we're moving over to this. Don't care literally don't care. And so we have collected around $60,000 of that 140 over the last, I think it's been, I don't know, 20 days. It was on the 12th. So whatever, however many days that is 18. So, or eight, 18, 18, 18. I can't do the math. I don't have, I don't have my calculator out. So, um, but, but we changed and automated that process so that I'm not worrying about what's happening. They're, they're signing up. And what, one of the little caveats that I did for them, I changed and said, listen, I'm going to make you prepay, but what I'm not going to do is increase your price this year. I said, that's a fair compromise. I'm asking you to do something different. I'm not going to raise my prices this year. I price I price pretty heavy. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. You should. But, 
You know what I mean? So I knew now next year that now they know I'm not increasing your pricing this year, which means they know because of that message that it's going to increase next year. And it's just eliminated. I'm not chasing people. I also told them in the video from an automation, you have to get your, you have to sign this by February 15th or you're out. You're off the team. You're no longer part of Team Brolin. You're out of here. If you can't sign and pay a simple engagement letter by the February 15th, then I'm not interested in chasing you again this year. There's Those are the people that don't sign. And I even said to them, if there's an exception, let me know. So the automating of the cash flow and the billing and the payment method and all of that, it's not even part of our process anymore. We've minimized the risk of accepting credit card payment authorization forms, which is what I used to do. So all those kind of things have been eliminated. And now, and not only that, Randy, you want to talk about automation, my, my revenue account, my revenue in QuickBooks Online is accurate at all times. It posts an invoice the moment that they sign. The invoice goes over automatically to QuickBooks. I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to create invoices. I don't have to go in and push payment. It just all happens automatically. So as part of that process, the accounting process of invoices being issued and payments being received has just totally eliminated that part. It's probably going to save me, I'll probably say five hours in tax season, which to me is almost a day because I only work like six hours a day. Yeah, we will get to that for sure. We'll get to that. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. That's great. I think I think I want to jump forward because based on what you just talked about, I think part of that is setting boundaries. So so let's uh, let's transition and we'll skip a couple things. Let's and we'll go, come back to pricing. But let's talk about setting boundaries. Um, and part of that is I think onboarding, too. And, and when we onboard, I know we're into tax season already. It's probably I'm going to guess you're going to say no new clients is already that deadline's passed. Um, but but let's talk about the boundaries, setting, uh, setting, uh, um, onboarding, and when deadlines are for you. Just mentioned one deadline. You don't get this by February 15th, you're out. But how about deadlines to bring in new business? Well, I know that's a lot of things at once, but I have faith yeah. that you can go to all of it. Oh, so absolutely. Yeah, so we are still taking new clients. Okay. So we're still we're still in that process. Um, and it, it depends, right? So we, I had a kid in here, stuff sitting right over there on the chair. So he came in, gave me all his stuff. He's got six rental properties, a schedule C business, taking down trees, and he has no accounting system. So he, his prior accountant who's retiring, and I know who this tech, this practitioner is and, and doesn't charge enough and lets people come in with scrap pieces of paper with the income and expenses on it. And I just don't do that. And I literally have the paper over there. So we sat down and I said, all right, let me look through this stuff. Talk to Nicole. And I said, listen, you, you know, he wanted us to do his 1099s. That was the most important thing. So we're like, no problem. We'll get your 1099s done, but we got to talk about what we're doing for 23. And then what are we doing in 24 moving forward? He didn't want to be part of the relationship pricing in 24 moving forward. He's like, I don't want to pay a bill, well, an extra bill every month or whatever. And so we said, goodbye, go find somebody else who's willing to do your scratch pieces of paper, tax returns, and all the rest of this stuff, bye. Or we have a client that'll call up and, or someone that'll call up and say, oh, I was referred by so-and-so. It's you know an individual tax return. I'll look through the tax return, bill them by the form. You're in, you're out. Send the proposal. Some of them were surprised that they sign it and they pay. And some of them were like surprised they don't. So you know, as far as the new clients go, we've got a really pretty good rhythm right now. Um, lots of non-filers are coming in. Mm. The IRS, uh, I have a friend who not, has not been a client because he's never filed a tax return and he does um, power washing. And I keep to every time I see him, I'm like, you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. And so he called me up a week ago, got his letter. Yup, they caught me. So now I've got to file all of these things. So we're going to see that stuff coming, but it's all about the boundaries and saying yes and no to what the work you want to do. And so that's something that we've kind of set boundaries, but other boundaries we've set is the February 15th, sign your engagement letter, all of that business clients, February 20th, your stuff is due period. I don't want to hear any excuses. I don't care about what's going on. So um, February 20th for businesses uh, for individuals, March 20th is their final date. And I told them, I said I'm not doing extensions unless it's an unusual circumstance. Now, 
with the, so what I plan on doing is preparing all of those business returns through February, regardless of the bill, preparing all of those tax returns and having them ready. Then set, things may change. I should still have no problem filing by the 15th of March. Yep. Because this is what the boundary we set. You have to have your accounting done through the year. We are not a compliance driven firm. We are an advisory planning all getting on top of things on a month, at least a monthly basis. There's no reason the compliance is even a worry with the exception of this bill that may you know come through or those kind of changes, but the accounting should be done. We should be able to prepare returns and then wait for those changes to happen. And we could file all of them on the 15th, who cares? So, you know, we're just driving it in that capacity. Um, some other boundaries, just kind of like a little sidebar for people for boundaries. One of the things is I ca- I do a lot of calendar blocking. So I'll put in, because Tracy will put tax appointments in there. We agree on the dates and times people can set up an appointment on my schedule, not on their schedule. Um, I'll book out if I know I need to do returns in, in the office. I've got, let's say, five individual tax returns that need to get done. I'll block a three or four hour thing saying in-house tax returns. One of the best things I did in the last 30 days, this is this is wild. I took email off my phone. Mm-hmm. I, was I ask no about longer, that. yep, I no longer will will have email on my phone. And here's why. I have a business phone that I don't take out of the office. This is your authenticator or whatever. Some people, client, business clients have this so cell phone number. And that doesn't leave the office unless I'm traveling. And I and I plan on working while I'm traveling. I, that stays in here. What I wasn't doing was I didn't take, I had, I had my phone and I have my email on there. Um, all that kind of stuff. Well, so it may sound unrealistic. It's not, do you know what it actually has done for me? It has given me peace of mind at night because I will check emails at night. I would check emails 24 seven on my phone. Everywhere I went, I would check my phone. And what's happened is number one, I, when I, you know, I'm in here till five o'clock. I got, I'm, I've checked and assessed my emails by five o'clock PM on my time zone. And I don't need to answer people's questions at night. They can wait until the next morning. That's possible. Uh And we're already on our phones for text constantly. Why should we be on our email feeling like we have to email back? And you know what? I haven't had one problem. We're still answering the emails. Haven't had one issue. I've been doing it for 30 days, but you know what I've done? I've never slept better at night. You know why? I used to check that darn email before I went to bed and someone's emailed me for something. Now I'm like, oh, I have to do something or whatever. And it clogs, that clogs your mind. And when you can come back in fresh, I kind of come in excited like, oh, I wonder if anyone signed their proposals because those are the emails I want to get. And we've been able to do it. So you know what? At the end of the day, you set your you set your business up the way you want, and I'll set mine up the way I want. But I'm going to run them on my terms. And and have I always done that? No, I've been everybody's slave for 24 years. You know, answering at night, responding to everything throughout the day, and I've had no peace in my life. And that tell you what, and you know who was one of the inspirations on that? Scott Scarano. Really? Because Scott Scott's like I don't even look at my email, so I don't go that far. <laughs> I do look at my email, but at the end of the day. It's just really good for me to have that clarity that I need. And that's setting boundaries, right? I don't have tax appointments before 10 a.m. I don't want to talk to anyone before 10. I just don't. I come in, get myself settled, know what I need to do for the, for the day. And and then off I go and, and run with it. So. Yep. I think that's, so I assumed you were listening to my mental health presentations and talking about being able to shut down at the end of the day. So I'm going to expand on that because you are doing it. Um, even going a step further than what I say. But when, when I when I talk about that, it's, you just did a great example of it. Yes, you check your email at night. You wake up at three in the morning because you're expecting this email and you wake up and think, oh, let me email come through. I got to go check because I need this stuff. I need to do this tomorrow. I need whatever, whatever it is. You, you, you're checking text messages, Teams messages, what's up messages, what's app messages, I should say. <laughs> All our, or what's up? Hey, what's yeah, up? What's up? Hey. <laughs> um, all hours. And so I learned this from Brian Cush, but he 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 tells people this system you, to shut down at the end of the day. And, and I love what you're doing. But his system is just bookmark your work before you leave the office. Just oh, tell yourself where you're going to. So now you've told your morning self what your what your evening self left off on. So you can shut your brain down. 
your brain needs rest so you can shut it down so now i don't have to think about that anymore i can go home and and i know that i've already told myself what i have to do tomorrow no more worrying about that all night long yep two what he says is you do you come up with a plan instead and and you have many things we'll talk about that you can do you already do instead of thinking about work you coach softball and we'll, we'll expand on that um but instead you have an instead of plan so instead of you know checking my email tonight i'm going to you know watch a movie i'm going to go to a show i'm going to read a book i'm going to do a puzzle whatever it is you you actually set a plan in place to start to train yourself that this is time to to shut down and then third you just have an end of the day ritual for shutting down it kind of just a, if you go through this ritual you've trained yourself you start to get used to the fact that the day's over I don't have to check my text and my emails or anything. I don't have to think about work. I'll do that in the morning when I get back to the office or the office in the home or the kitchen table or wherever <laughs> you're working. But when I get back to that spot, I know I'm prepared. So I think that's huge. The fact that you even went to the standpoint of let's eliminate the even opportunity to look at an email. Um, uh, uh, you, you, you've, t I might start building that into my presentation. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> appreciate that. Well, let's go further on the self-care then too, because one of the, one of the self-care items that I love that you do is you have a life outside of tax season, outside of, uh, of sitting and doing tax returns. And, and it started a few years ago, but during tax season, uh, you're coaching softball. And I think that's a great example for people. So why don't you talk about how that came about and how that, you know, how you've made the time to be able to do that. Yeah. And that's the thing right there, making the time. Nobody has the time. You, you don't have, you have, you know what you have, you have 24 hours to choose what you do with it every day. And you get to choose what that looks like. And for everyone, it's different. Some may be similar, but I did, I, I made a, um, I made a, big step in 2019 that I was going to coach college softball. I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid. I don't want to get paid. I do it because I'm passionate about it. I love the kids. I love the game. And I love to help young women learn life lessons while they're going through this process because life, life is just like a batting average, Randy. People that bat 350, you're crushing it. And you're only winning three and a half times out of 10. So yeah. that, and that's life. You're going to, you're going to fail more than you're going to succeed. And I would say just about every case, but in most cases, you know, things don't, there, there's no such thing unless you're a silver spooner as an overnight success. Really. It's like, so I decided to do that. And you know what? Some people told me I was a crazy person. They're like, I can't believe you're, you leave the office at three o'clock to go to practice at three 30. And then some days you actually don't even work because you travel with them to go to a game. And oh my goodness, you take the week off before March 15th to go to spring break. Yup. I sure do. And you know what? I lost a couple of employees over it. I don't care. You know what? I built, I built my business for 20. At that point, it was like 20 years or however many it was at that point. I said, you know what? I've been serving the masses. I've been, you know, bowing down to clients and bowing down to my staff and bowing down to all these things that took me away from my family. Because that's what it does. It takes you away from having a life. So you get to have choices on what you want to do with your time. And I chose to do that. And so for me, that's why boundaries are super important for me because I have, I do leave the, leave the office. And that's why I come in at 10 because I got a five hour work day. Cause the last thing I want to do is come back after practice. Now, sometimes I do, cause if I have, and I don't meet with a ton of people, but you know, I probably have 10 or 12, 15, maybe 15 clients that actually come in. And so we know, they know the routine it's Thursday nights or Saturdays, unless I have a game which usually during tax season, we don't because we don't even start playing um, till late March here in, in Connecticut or in the New England area. So, you know, they know that I, and they love that I coach softball. They're like, I'm so glad you do. Like, they're like, it's so weird. Like you're somebody who actually like does stuff you're out of human. the office. You're a human. <laughs> Holy crap. Like they don't even believe it. So, you know, it's again, it's what finding something that you're passionate about. Some people love pickleball. Some people like Leanne, she likes to roller skate or you like to dance, uh, you know, whatever it is that you like to do outside of the office, by the way, you don't have to do it at night or at 5 a.m. before your day starts. You can do it in the middle of the day because it's up to you and the way you want to run your firm. We don't have 
um, set vacations. Tracy just went on a cruise last week. Um, you know, she's got friends coming down next week. She's not going to be available for three of the four days. I'm like, Tracy, you're gonna, I know you're going to check your email. I know you're going to check your voicemail. I'm not worried about it. If I don't have a client complaining, I got no complaints. So, you know, at the end of the day, we've just, we've just made a major mind shift in how we now care for ourselves. And, and we actually say, you know what, I'm going to put myself first here for once for the first time in my life. Not because I want to be selfish, but because I need to, I'm, a, I'm 53, man, I'm coming down the hill. Like I got to be, I got to have some time and I want to enjoy myself. And when I'm in the office, I'm so productive. I'm not busy in the office because you could be in your office for 60 hours and not even be productive. Right, Randy? Productivity is, is a component that people say, oh, it's busy season. Well, you know what? Maybe for you, for me, it's productive season because I want to get my work done. I want to do a good job. I want to take care of my clients and I want to do that. But I also want to take care of myself and my staff at the same time. And those are something that most people they, they just look past it and they think it's ridiculous. There's no way I could do that. Okay. Well, I used to say the same thing. Absolutely used to be me. There's no way I could do that. Well, guess what? There is a way to do it. You just have to make cho different choices. Yep. And it's time management, which you already uh, kind of alluded to. You do that. You block out time where you can't be disturbed, where this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do this high end, high brain power uh, activities. I'm not going to check my email. I'm not going to check my text. That is something that, oh, and just so everybody knows, the poll is up. I, I, I see responses coming in slow, but uh, there's been a lot more responses uh, in the past. So that makes me think you're not looking at your screen, uh, but, um, <laughs> but that's fine. You're multitasking. Uh, I had a conversation today that uh, that uh, uh, somebody was I uh, was on the podcast and he talked about multitasking. He said that their studies show that your IQ goes down by ten points when you multitask. So. <laughs> So um, just making sure your IQs don't go down. Make sure you got to keep your eyes on the screen here. All right. So, so yeah, that, that, that's all great. The fact that you're able to do that during tax season. Last year's conference, we had a, uh, um, you know, people talking about taking vacations during tax season, which you do with spring, you know, your, your, your trips for, for volleyball, volleyball, softball. I'm a volleyball fanatic. Uh, that's what I see. There play. you go. What's wrong with that? On the main. Well, and Randy, uh, there's a great there's a great question in the Q and A here that I yes, think maybe I was going to bring that up. Pricing, yep. right? It's you. That's it. All right, listen, folks. Here's the deal. We decided a year and a half ago or so that we were going to move to a relationship subscription pricing model, and 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 I, I actually just did a whole course on it last Thursday. I did it live, but it is on demand on um, Eric Green's website, Tax Rep Network. It's a three-hour course about moving from hourly pricing, value pricing, to subscription pricing. The do's and don'ts, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because there's some stuff that I didn't do right. But what we, what the conversation we had, and we we picked three or five client, three to five clients, and said these are our friendlies. We we know these people we can do, be doing more for. We know there's requirements like reasonable comp for S corps that we should be doing, but we shouldn't be giving it away. So we need to step it up. So I sat down with my clients and I said, this is what we're doing. No more hourly billing. We're not going to bill you by the hour. You're not going to get big bills, you know, that you didn't expect because we spent 10 hours doing something. Um, we're going we're gonna to do it based on what we believe to be the value that we're bringing to you and get you on a one-year subscription. What I didn't do very well is I didn't describe the fact that a subscription means, and let's just use 2023 as an example, you're on the subscription pricing from January to December and you are paying X number of dollars a month for us to do whatever needs to be done in that calendar year. So in 23, we prepare 22 tax returns. That's the thing. What we, what people didn't seem, well, just two clients didn't seem to realize was when that contract ends, that doesn't mean we're doing your 2023 tax returns in 24. And in January, we are, in January, we are um, not doing your 1099s because you're not on the subscription if you don't renew. It's what we're doing through the year. So like Netflix is how I describe it now. Like Netflix, you pay a fee every month. And you know what? You get to watch as many movies and shows as you want. If you don't watch any, they don't care. You're still paying for it. So there's some months that are heavier that we do a lot of work. There's months that are slow, like May and June are, are kind of light months. So 
we we know that those are going to be light, but January to March, middle of April, we're doing a lot of stuff for you, right? So we're just saying as we're going through, but moving to the subscription pricing, the relationship pricing model solidifies cash flow and all of that. So the how to's there's, like I said, I did a three hour workshop and I probably could have gone another two hours on how it's done. I, and if this person says, uh, the link to the pricing webinar that will be on uh, dawnbrolin.com by Monday. So if you go, if you just keep that in your wheelhouse there, dawnbrolin.com, um, it's an on demand course, won't be CPE credits because it's obviously on demand. So, uh, but we we moved to that because we didn't want to do the billing. Now, here is one other thing real quick on pricing. If someone doesn't want to be in the relationship pricing and they're a business owner, if they're doing their own books, that's fine. We'll do your, let's use S-Corp tax return. The, the tax return is 2,500. It's a premium tax return because you just want me to be your tax preparer. It will include your individ, your business return, your reasonable comp analysis, pass through any tax calculations, if any, because obviously at the federal level, they get a deduction. And we'll do all of that. And we're doing that for 5750 bucks. So if you wanted us to do your S-Corp return, this is what we're going to do for you. And so we, and we've just, you know, new clients come in, we do it by the form, 500 bucks to do a 1040 minimum. Then you add a schedule C, that's 500. Rental properties, 300 a piece. Then, all, you know, on and on, all by the forms. And if you go to dawnbrolin.com and you go to free resources, I have a pricing list on how I charge uh, pr pricing wise for the returns that we prepare. You're happy to go grab that, use it all day long. Uh, but we're, I don't, we don't definitely don't have enough time to go through how to move from one to the other. But understand the first thing though, Randy, that's really important. And I think people, this would be a really great tip is it's a whole entire change in mindset. Read the book Time's Up by Ron Baker will help you get started um, shifting your mindset. But we've got to stop billing by the hour. By the way, if you hadn't noticed, tons of people are retiring. People have either died or retired. I've gotten more referrals in the last month than I'd ever had gotten before in prior years. And we are picking through who we'll keep and who we won't. And they and we just, sometimes we price them out and that's okay. I don't need tire kickers. Yep, I, I agree with that because they're, the clients are available. There are plenty of clients out there. There's no reason to give our services away. I think that's another mindset. We often give away advisory services when we don't even know we're doing it. You're saving the client money and you, you're, you're, it, it's just in your mind. That's something I do. So I just included it. It's no big deal. I have the answer. So I just well, gave them the answer. Exactly. And especially with the pastor entity tax, people are like, like people don't even know. I had a, a new client call last week. I'm like, do you know North Carolina is eligible for the pass-through entity tax. You get to elect in or, or not elect to, to go in, but it's going to save you on the federal side tax money. I said to this to this client, I'm like, based on what you had in 22, looking at pass-through entity tax, you could have saved yourself $4,000 alone in federal tax because you took advantage of the pass-through entity tax. And I, we're going to charge you $9,000 a year, seven fifty dollars a month to be in this program. What You've already gotten probably $4,000 of, of money that you're now paying us instead of the government. That's the way right. I tell them. Yep. Nope. And that's the way to do it. And so pricing, you know, you kind of went into it. We were going to talk about that. You already did. So, so we're good on pricing. I think the whole bottom line, and we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes. Um, the bottom line is the fact, and I think you're a great example of you can get the work done in less time. Uh, you can decide that you're not going to live under the rules that the accounting profession has been under for the last 80 years and you're going to figure out a new way to do it. I think somebody in the chat said, okay, well, that's great for Dawn, but I don't think I can do it. Believe me, you can. It's, uh, I, I, have a, 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 I have a firm in Iowa, uh, a fairly decent sized firm that went on to a plan of time management uh, a few years ago. And before they did this, so they did what Don was talking about. They they scheduled out time on their, their calendar. This is what I'm going to do at this time. I can't be interrupted. It's full concentration time. I'll take this three hours in the afternoon where I'll return emails, make calls, do billing, whatever it is, whatever the, the things that don't take the high brain power. They installed this time management system. And actually, they use the Michael Hyatt. I think it's called free to focus uh, system or a uh, full focus system, something like that. But they went from a, I think it was close to 70 hours a week during tax season that on average people were putting in 
this past tax season, tax season of 23, so a year ago now, I, I talked to the managing partner there, and she told me that they got down to, on average, 47 hours a week per individual. Profitability went up. More work went out the door, spending less time in the office. And I think, unfortunately, we just have this mindset. Nothing's going to happen unless I'm sitting at my desk for 60 hours a week or 80 hours a week. And that's not the case. That's just a mindset. Your mind can change, but you have to find the systems to put in place to, to manage your time better. So I, I, if there's any one piece of advice that I can, and the last poll's up, just let everybody know. We have one response in right now. So one person's answering the fourth poll. <laughs> one person's um, being dead. Oh, seven. <laughs> now, now they're coming in. So so the last poll is up. But one of the biggest things is time management. And we can change the way we use our time during tax season. There can be efficiencies. One of the simplest things is what Don does. And just don't get distracted. If you get distracted, you know, what's the statistics out there? It takes you 20 minutes to get back to the project you were working on. You know, your mind to understand where you were. You do that four times a day you just lost an hour and 20 minutes wow i did that math fast um, <laughs> um so so that's just something to be aware of time management is one of the keys and 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 having training yourself to not have to do it the same way you do any final thoughts don before we wrap this up you know i just think you know if you can just change one little thing in your process for this tax season even if it's just you know what when i come into the office i get right to work and i don't go through my email I get right to the office and I, what do I do? Where am I setting the boundaries of your time? Um, and I think you're right, 100%. Distractions are no good. Um, and just like, you know, I have one tax return in front of me on my, I don't have paper all over the place because clutter causes confusion. That's just for me, ADHD, I suppose, whatever, is, is making those little changes. And you know what? Why would you have your email on your phone if you are working those 60 hours? What do you need it on your phone for? So what, you go in the house, you go, you go home and you're at dinner and you're like, oh, let me just check my email. Like, what are you doing? Again, it's different for, I, Mark, I appreciate that. It's different for everybody, 100%. But even just one little tweak may make your tax season a lot better. And that's the thing. Start with one. You don't, one. To, don't get overwhelmed. Do one thing different. Find a way to do, you know, whatever. Block out a half hour. You know, start with that. You know, uh, 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 eliminate this portion of what you do and delegate it to someone else. Uh, collaborate on some very sophisticated, you know, partnership tax return that you don't have time to learn and you know somebody else that's an expert at that. Just do one little thing at a time. And in the long run, in that firm I talked about, in the long run, it'll make a difference. That firm I talked about, first year, they didn't go to 47 hours. It went from 70 to 65 to 50, you know, the 53 down to 47. So it wasn't an overnight. Yes, we went from 70 hours to 47. It was a learning process, but that learning process happened because they made that first step. So make a well, first step. I got one last thing too. Yep. As you're going through tax season, this is what we do is we have like a worksheet that we all will put in uh, this process stinks. Like we can't do this way again next year. We need to do something different here. We make that list and we review back. And the same thing as far as you making that one little tweak, evaluate the tweak. Did it make a difference? If it didn't, then do something else that's different to make to make a change. And, and you're just constantly reiterating your processes and, and the way you look at things. Um, and that's just something we've done every year is just keep that list. And at the end of the tax season, because you can't really make tons of changes, but you can make little ones uh, as you're going through the season. But um, keep track of that so you don't have those same pain points the next year. Yep, I agree. And then uh, let's uh, uh, one thing I wanted to point out before we go. Don mentioned this. I mentioned this. But this is the Accounting Store Cornerstone Foundation. Those are not all the board members. I don't know how Don and I uh, made the <laughs> made the cut on this cut. The graphic. Um, but uh, you can see at the bottom, there's a link to the Accounting Cornerstone Foundation. You will have these slides. And so you can see it. And you can see that awesome quote by Dawn over on the right-hand side as well. I uh, wanted to highlight that. And then I wanted to just thank everybody for, for being part of this today. Uh, this is going to be a monthly uh, webinar we do on some topic that hopefully helps you in this profession to, to have that work-life balance that is not a myth, that is actually exists and it can happen. And Dawn's a great example of that. So Dawn, I want to thank you tremendously for taking time out a very busy time to be part of this today no very productive time but thank you so much <laughs> thank you 
And thanks everybody. And any additional questions? Uh, um, well, you know what? There is a question there that I may not have seen yet. Let's see. Uh, uh, so. Yeah. Oh, wait, is your best guess that the old ERC April 15th on the window and tomorrow bill passed? I'm not, uh, I, my best guess is that tomorrow's the last day we can file ERC. That's my best guess. We as a company are going to continue to, I think this is the question. We as a con company are going to continue to file until we get news otherwise it may be a waste of resources on our end because they may retroactively say that january 1st was the last day but just in case the legitimate claims just in case uh there are still legitimate claims that the people haven't submitted we are going to continue to do that until this tax bill passes um so hopefully that answers your question but that april 15th date does not look like it's going to stay I i'm almost certain that that we are going to get a new date most likely the date will be tomorrow, January 31st. All right, I think that's it. That's the last question in. Uh, again, thanks, Don. We'll talk soon. Thanks everybody for being part of this.